Before it was Cornerstone, it was Ramley's Road Chapel, but we needed to make fundamental changes. And so three years ago, the last remaining three elders got together. We prayed earnestly on this and we were led by the Spirit, I believe, to, to, um, to ask Steve and Sean, his wife, to come and be the pastor of the church. And then um, the name got changed then to Cornerstone, which is a biblical uh, title of Jesus Christ, actually. He's the chief cornerstone. He's the rock on which the church is built. And as you have witnessed already, from a congregation of around 30 last Sunday, with 30 or more people missing for various reasons, uh, we couldn't sit everybody down and so we were into a 90 or 100 people and so uh, we've seen the blessing. There's a real diverse um, age range but also quite diverse culturally as well so we've got people from different country, countries, different social economic backgrounds, people from Liverpool, people from outside of Liverpool, so very diverse. I moved to England five years ago looking for work and things work in such a way in, in my life that things weren't very well, to, to be fair. I was full on atheist. I would not believe in anything spiritual. Through a series of circumstances, I came to read the Bible more out of curiosity. I would say if, if this life is all that is, then I really messed yeah, it up. Yeah, so I was brought up in the USA with my parents and my sister um, and my dad was church secretary that means that he like kind of oversaw a lot of things going on in the church and the elders were given families that they kind of like looked after and um, my dad had an affair with our family elder um, which completely broke up our family my dad went and lived with this woman up until that point, I had believed because I'd been told to believe. Um, and so this was just like me walking away completely. I, didn't, I wasn't really bothered. And I thought, like, how can a, a man of God, which my dad has always claimed to be, do something like that? I grew up Catholic. I grew up going to church, church in Rainhill, St. Bart's. I got to my teenage years, went to church because my mum and dad did it once a week. Um, that was it basically, I didn't really do anything about church. Slowly as I, as I kind of went from 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, things started kind of just losing track. So went to university, um, it was a very narcissistic lifestyle in Liverpool. So there's a, there's a very much so, especially amongst young lads, young girls, there's a, there's a very much a drinking culture, um, a clothes culture, looking good culture, um, go and enjoy yourself. So basically go and do what you need to do, go and have what you need to have, go and take what you need to take, um, go and be with who you need to be with, basically was the idea, and actually that's respected. I studied university saying, got involved, I was on a football player, played with the football team, we started closing myself off and things, seeking to kind of find fulfilment, satisfaction in everything I possibly could, to be perfectly honest with you, in whatever way I could, in however I could, I wasn't someone who did it by half measures as well, so I went out, I went out. If I wanted to do something, I would do something. If I wanted to take something, I would take something. The gospel community is the church. It's a different, different sort of different name for it, I, I guess. But what we do is we, we have sort of the aggregate of all our little gospel communities, which are groups of people that meet together in the week, do life together, but with a real intentionality to share the good news of Jesus with their neighbours, to eat together, encourage each other, care for each other, pray for each other engage with their neighbours in a specific geographical area and then on a Sunday that's the aggregate of all of us coming together where we celebrate of our service and sing together. They've accepted me and they know from the start. Uh, Jen joined the church, my wife, two years ago and I wanted to try and be involved so it wasn't she was having a separate life. The basic one, I need proof. I'm someone who needs proof. I believe in science and I need things spelt out to me. The whole thing about it, I think you need to have faith and it's not something you can learn or you either have it or you don't and I don't. So obviously I don't go to church and I, I come in and I leave before the, pr the praying starts so I just come for, for an hour before and uh, enjoy the company and, and the food. It, it 
so happened that I was away from Liverpool for a while. I was away from uh, temptations like like drugs and things like that. And yeah, I read the Bible and I was reading. I I always had this urge to tell people about it. Okay, I. I want to talk to people about the things that I'm reading. You hear conversion stories and the first thing people tell you is like, I stopped swearing. Okay, I really stopped swearing. Okay, in Romanian, we have, I, I can swear for half an hour without repeating myself, okay? I was still addicted to drugs and I know people, I've talked to people and told them my testimony and said, oh, you know, you were the influence, you were reading that book every day your mind started working that way, you, you wired yourself in that way, you know, you, you brainwash yourself, I heard that, you know, because people go into a church and say, oh, those people brainwash you to believe that. My housemates, when, you know, when they were coming into my room, I would close the Bible, I would not want anyone to know that I was reading the Bible. I, I said to God, you know, if, if you're real, I got halfway through the Bible and said, I, I have to say, do, do I really believe these things? Because I can't carry on reading about this God, about these events in history and and say, well, yeah, it could or could, it, they might not be true. Yeah, I started praying to God and, and he, he delivered me from, from my drug addiction, just like that, you know, one day I just didn't do it anymore. I went and worked in Peru in an orphanage for a year and um, I was working alongside Mormons and um, I think they kind of grounded me a little bit and brought me back to thinking about God and um, I went to a thing called General Conference which is broadcast from Utah twice a year with one of the Mormons just to learn about it and which is the time when I first felt God and um, I, I was listening to someone preaching and, and talking about um, doing good in the world and like what have you done good in the world today and children have been sending in things and one of the things they'd sent in was a massive jar of pom-poms and each pom-pom represented a good thing in the, that they'd done. So every time they did a good deed, they put a pom-pom in the jar, which is really moving. And to think all of that good going on, inspired by this gentleman who had mentioned it. And um, I just, I felt God there. Like I just, I burst into tears. Um, I just felt like this overwhelming feeling of love and hope is the only way I can put it into English. I, I kind of met a girl in, in the school I was working in about, uh, about a year and a half, two years later. And it was a girl who, who went to church. And she said, oh, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Christian. And I was like, cool, so am I. You know what I mean? She was pretty, you know, she was nice. She said, uh, <laughs> like, I'll be a Christian, that's not a problem, you know what I mean? What do you mean? She's like, what do you mean you're a Christian? I said, well, I'm Catholic. I grew up Catholic, I'm a Christian. So I was thinking about Jesus, and I'm like, yeah, sound, that kind of thing, you know, he's great, yeah. Um, and he died, stuff like, is he God? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, why did he die? I don't know, no idea. He yeah, could be, but there's, you know, there's many other ways, there's this, the, 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 the. And so immediately, immediately, I had a million one questions. She said, I won't go out with you until, you know, I, I, I'm not going to go long term with you unless you're a Christian. I can't do that because my, my kind of my priority is Jesus. And I was like, okay, a bit weird, like, but I'll go along with that. And so we went along to this church, and it was weird because, um, there was a buzz about it, and it was a, it was a message, and the message was challenging. It was um, I had I had a problem with it at first. I have to be honest, I, I had a major problem with the fact that he was saying things that I didn't agree with, and he was challenging concepts that I didn't really want him to challenge. And the message he spoke of, he was clear. He was he spoke with passion, and and he spoke about Jesus. So if you read through the book of Psalms, it talks a lot about music and celebration and worship through song and praise. And it mentions an array of instruments. Music is a gift from God, so we want to celebrate and worship him through that. That's why we have the, the band more than, there's nothing wrong with an organ or just a piano or anything like that, that's fine, but that's what we do. together to show the excellences of God and I, and I see there's something in the way that we live as a community that people are drawn to. The reason why we live like this is because of Jesus and what he's done for us. I was walking down the street here, just here this door was open and um, there was this guy sitting right here 
in the front of the church, at the front of the church, in shorts and flip-flops, playing guitar. It was Sunday morning, you know. I said, you know, I, I'll go there. I'll go. Just, just to see men singing, you know, putting their hands up. I was like, oh no, this, this is strange, man. And this guy just stood up from the Bible and just, just telling people about Jesus and, and urging them to follow him. And I said, this, this is, this is, God brought me here. Ten people have got baptized, you all have the name down. At the end he says, right, is there anybody else here who wants to get baptized? And I was like, no, it's got me, and I'm like pounding away. And I said to the money, well, can I go up? And um, she went, yeah, so I just kind of stood up. And when everyone was like, this was, yeah, it was bizarre. It was, it was, it was bizarre. It was amazing like how it happened. So I went up, stood there, and then yeah, got baptized and all my life, sent my phone in my pocket and everything. Yeah, like fully clothed, you know what I mean? I had all my best gear on. It signifies the Holy Spirit washing your sins. It signifies all your sin gone away, and it signifies you've been raised to life. And Brian said to me outside, that was the Holy Spirit moving in you, and I was like, I was scared though, and I thought I actually thought that he was right. Um, and then, also while I was in Peru, um, one of my childhood friends died in a car crash, which just wiped the slate clean again. And I just thought maybe I was just being over emotional, but it was still kind of playing on my mind. Um, and so, on the day of her funeral, I went into a, a local church and just got on my knees and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I said, God, if you're out there can you talk to me? Like, I need you if you're that. And I walked out of that church different person and I didn't cry again about my friend and I just felt peace.